All right, friends, this is my friend Jeannie Rodriguez. Hi, Jeannie. <laughs> We're just sitting at the table talking, and I wanted to record this because you got to see our hearts in this, right? Isn't yeah. that what it's all about? <laughs> Okay, yeah. share what you were just sharing with me. Uh, so we just had a moment, and we're just discussing what 12.1 means to us, uh, given to us by God, downloaded and through me. And so we've been through the process of figuring out what God wants to do with this division, which to me, it's a symbol of, it's a running symbol, like most runners or athletes would would see it and would say, oh, that's running. 13.1 um, being the half a marathon. Well, 12.1, like, we're almost there. <laughs> we can do it. Just be ourselves. Don't compare to others. And it's really a symbol of that means that we win in life. To tell everyone about the great news, the good news, and that uh, we do win. It's, it's, a lot, it's a symbol of life. Of, and we all go through struggles. We... We can share with one another, we can support each other, hug each other, cry with each other, pray with each other, encourage each other, and, uh, and just keep keep running, stay in our lane, and loving it. So, but when we were talking about how, I mean, we keep talking about the process, what happened with 12.1, the vision, which was to... The Great Commission to spread the gospel to in a non-offensive and practical way. The practical, the simplicity of it. That you know, it's just very simple. And it is based on 12, um, Hebrews 12.1. Um, we're surrounded by a cloud of witness. Just leave all the crap behind. This is the genie version. <laughs> and leave our sin behind and run the race that is marked out for us. That Jesus that God gave us. It's all different, isn't it? Yeah. So, <clears throat> so through the process of being molded and molding the vision and just downloading and putting it down paper, but uh, we've gone through different stages. I feel that, yes, we'll stick to the vision of being practical, non-offensive, non-offensive and practical to reach others, a tool to, to be relational evangelism. However, I think that we will be able to have groups, and that's when then you be more <laughs> versed and so eloquent no. and so uh -huh. like, yeah, well, you are the editor in chief, like it or not. You're blogging, you stop it. So, uh, yeah, you'll be able to be more of a ministering tool. I, I, you know, we've all been, like, I have my own race, you have your own race. God has called me for different um, ways, and you are anointed in your own gifting. So I think that that really, pretty much that's what I got from just talking about, that this will be something that you'll be able to then take it, or anyone, and run with it. About it yeah. Run with it, go with it, let the Holy Spirit speak through you and be able to then feed people. Just yeah. and we're passing the baton and letting people know that they can do this. They can run right. they need to run the race and focus on the finish line and we win and God's got us and it's awesome. So it's not so much determined based on what we look like or what we feel like. Totally it's yeah. based on what we've been through. Totally. And uh, we've Relation. climbed our mountains and yes. we've reached our valleys. Struggles, yeah. yeah, and sharing that with other people, what a difference that can make in their life. Absolutely. Yeah, and we all go through struggles, and especially through the website that is set up where you can actually go in there, ask for prayer, or write your story. Yeah. So we all have a story you can write, and then people out there will be able to identify with your race right? and say, hey, I've been through that. With you, you my dad died tragically. It's, I can, you know, she'll be able to know exactly, because so many people, like when I lost my daughter, people would say, oh, you'll have another one. 
or oh, you know, um, all these things. That great sensitivity. Well, it didn't happen. I did not get another one. <laughs> it didn't help. Yeah. However, I know the hearts were good. They're pure. But I would have gotten more out of it from someone that had lost a daughter. Right. At a baby stage, because we all have lost children. I mean, look at my mother. She lost a twin daughter. Yeah. And I cannot imagine what she's been through. Yeah. Would never. I couldn't even attempt it, because I failed miserably. But I can say, Mom, you know, I love you, and I'm here for you. And I can hug her, I can kiss her, I can help her in any way, just being there. A yeah. lot of times it's just being there, your presence. And many times I don't feel like smiling, but guess what? I'm going to do it. Yeah, there you go. Do it. Just put on that <laughs> smile. And yeah. So basically, yeah, it's a tool for encouraging, it's a tool. Let, let this marketing tool that God downloaded be something you could use in your life to reach out to others, to encourage others in a non-offensive, practical way. I love that. Yeah. I love that. And I love seeing the far-reaching results of it. Because mm -hmm. this is touching people's lives. You know, like mm -hmm. we have, we had our meeting Saturday. Mm -hmm. And, um, first meeting. yeah, first vision casting meeting. And, you know, there may have been maybe a couple people that really didn't resonate with it but I think most of them did I think the longer they sit and think about it um, it's like it kind of creeps up on you yeah. you realize whoa this is right. huge this is a big tool but that's the beauty of it that it's not by what we do it's what he does yeah so we're just planting the seed we're just stepping out in faith and stepping out taking that big that step yeah and the funny thing is like the hardest thing to do is take the first step and then, and then he shows up. Girl. And then, bang. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> On the floor, bawling out. Cats and dogs sleeping together. <laughs> so let me, let me ask you this. Um, this is so much a part of you. Um, Can I have some of your coffee? I'm I don't kidding. care. <laughs> just kidding. Um, I... I I want them to hear your heart for, your vision for missions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we call it missions, but really it's just other people running their race. Yeah. And what God has called them yeah. to do. Unofficial missions. Absolutely. You know, people on the street. All whoever, over the world. Yeah. The I mean, there are people who are called right here to this city to just reach out and hug the homeless and mm -hmm. minister to them mm -hmm. right where they are. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, we can't think that one is more special than the other yeah. but um tell tell us what your heart is for missions uh, uh. well i'm in awe because i i don't have that many hands and feet i know that i'm just kind of a good advocate a, a delegator though mm -hmm. but i'm just in awe that they have that passion that to love the lord and to get out there and tell everybody they're not afraid of rejection this is really out of my comfort zone for me to put a camera in front of me and start that day. <laughs> Only you, Sandy. <laughs> so, and I would love to go to Israel. I would love to go and travel. I love to travel. But that's not what God is calling me. So, I'm just impressed and humble that people can just do that. Leave everything behind and... I ask God to use me, always afraid that he's going to send me to a little, like, hut in the middle of the Amazon, or maybe, if I'm lucky, I have a hut, right? Because he just fire ants under me. And he didn't. He just called me to do exactly, this is my race, just yeah. to encourage each other. But I love, I love that, what they do. Right? So you're selling uh, the bumper stickers, t-shirts, mm -hmm. etc. Um, to raise support for yeah, for the missions and for anyone that we are led to help. Yeah, of course I want to help everybody. Absolutely. So the more people help and partner or yeah. buy the t-shirts or the bumper stickers, the caps, the bags. Could be a one-time need. Could be yeah. a long-term need. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that's yeah. so important. I think sometimes I know I have 
you know, I feel like uh, my twenty-five dollar gift is really not going to make a difference. Oh boy! And yeah, ten dollars. It really doesn't matter, does it? But you know what I'm finding <clears throat> that. Do you really like to be in front of the camera? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm finding that, um, you know, if I put $5 in a pot mm -hmm. and somebody else puts another 5 and everybody in the room, say a 1,000 people are in the room, they each put $5 in, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Oh, but you know what's so cool? Yeah. Like, sorry to no, that's okay. I'm I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, like on Sunday, when Pastor Brooke um, invited Soul. Um, from the Pregnancy yeah, yeah. Crisis Pichon, Center. I think it was. Yeah, Pishon. Yeah, amazing. But, you know, like, we give money to missions. But I'm like, okay, missions, great. Yeah. But it's so awesome to see where they're, use, where they're using that money to right. for the blessing. Yeah. That was so exciting to me because yeah. he's saving lives. So that yes. means I'm saving lives. You know what because was so he's, cool? He's pro-life. Yes. I was like blown out of the way out of the water. He and, now was he the founder or does yeah, he he's just a CEO, he's the president? The okay, idea, he, idea. let me just explain to whoever listens well, to this. That's idea, don't him, so. He founded the is it Crisis Pregnancy Centers or it's called New Life. New Life. New okay, Life. Yeah. so what they do is they persuade people mm -hmm. through through testimony mm -hmm. through their stories mm -hmm. about saving lives but the coolest thing about his entire story I thought personally was the fact that he was uh, his mother was a Holocaust survivor oh, yes. and how many Jews were annihilated yeah and he made it his goal it was like God set him on a course to save the lives of so many people yeah. I love yeah. that. And you know, the doctor that actually prevented from her taking the last ovary, he was a prisoner, a doctor, Jew, a Jewish prisoner. You know, I, I thought that was yeah. so amazing. Like, you know, what a I'm story. I'm take your ovary out, um, but you just got to hide your cycle and, and remember me when you have your first son. Yeah. And his name was Solomon. Solomon... I don't Solomon. remember his last name, but yeah. yeah. So they named their firstborn son Solomon, and, and he was a Jew who got to know the Lord in his 30s, mm -hmm. who didn't even know Jesus was a Jew. That was so funny. I know. I'm like, who doesn't know that? Uh, that's the word, yeah. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? His life has changed so many others. Mm -hmm. But Jeannie, your life has changed so many. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, we don't talk about it or you don't really think about it, but every person you've had contact with, you've changed lives. Oh, I've been changed by others. I, I totally have. Um, because we're not in... used to pray for me because I was just so into the new age. We're not so, in this race alone, are we? Yeah. No. Yeah, there's lanes, right, along with us. Yes. And so we just kind of like... I mean, we're supposed to fin look at the finish line and focus ahead. Otherwise, yeah. we, we, we do trip because we stink. Yes. We <laughs> Some more than others. <laughs> so, but no, we all do. And, yeah. Jeannie, tell that part thank of your God story. The, thank God for that cloud of witnesses around us. Tell that part of your story that you were a twin. Uh, well, I, I'm i still a twin, yeah. however. Identical twin sister, same old, same egg. Uh, yeah, um, love my sister. She just happens to be in heaven right now. Yeah. And she's kind of like picked out our mansion, so it's good. She always wanted to be first, so there you go. <laughs> Even when we were being born, my mom, I was coming out, I turned blue. So they did the emergency C-section, the bad one, mm. up and down. Oh, yeah. And they took my sister out. So, again, she always wanted to be first. No kidding. And so she was the oldest. I uh, love my sister. Talk to her like five, ten times a day. What are you doing? Oh, okay, yeah, okay, I'm at a red light. Okay, bye-bye. You know, just little things like that. Uh, she passed, she moved on, she passed away with lung cancer, never smoked, loved Jesus, her license plate used to say, um, Jesus my savior, all in code word, you know, like, well, Jesus my savior, I think it was, yeah, and, uh, she was great, I mean, we still fought like sisters, you know, she would steal my clothing, and she would <laughs> always want to wear the same things, and, but I love her. And she would pray for me. 
You got you got kind of sidetracked by some different religions, didn't you? Well, the New Age. Yeah. Because we grew up in church. We grew up. I mean, my uncle was a pastor. My my mom and dad. My mom's best friend was my dad's mother. My father had a, led a worship team, a worship group. They went all over um, Puerto Rico, the Caribbean, singing. They had a, a record. You know, round thing was black had a hole in the middle it's been around <laughs> oh I remember them <laughs> yeah and and uh, so yeah my aunt piano player worship uh, my uncle everybody singing but yeah and I was baptized when I was uh, 15 moved to United States from Puerto Rico had a lot of great people in my life that I met still in touch uh, yeah just uh so she's been through a lot. She passed away. My God, I, I feel like we, the cancer actually was a gift because you can have a tragedy like you did. How many times have you thought, when was the last time I said to my dad, I love you? Or when, when did I say it? Can yeah. you even imagine? Because my dad passed away too of yeah. cancer. But I was able to tell my sister that I loved her. I was able to take care of her. She died in my arms. And God did that because I, with my daughter, I used to beg God, like, don't let her die when I'm home. Because my <laughs> son was three. That's just wow. he was four. Wow. And he actually answered that prayer because she passed away with my favorite nurse, Jennifer, mm. on Thanksgiving Day. Wow. Praise she God. She was home 10 days. I was able to love on her, well, take care of her physically 10 days. What a great story. Yeah. But with my sister, she, she was like, I can't do this, God. I can, but how can you, I can't say that to her because she said, don't leave me. Yeah. So I was able to just have her in my arms and... <laughs> yeah. Ooh, what a great, great journey you've been on. And it's not over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all those prayers that your sister prayed for you. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. yeah. She'd be so proud of you. She'd be very, very proud of you. Well, Jeannie, thank you very much for taking the time to tell your story, part of your story, because that was only a small piece and it still goes on. And thank you for what you're doing. You're making such a difference in so many lives. And keep, yeah, keep running, keep running. You're benefiting a lot of people. I want you to know that. You have made such a difference in my life, an encouragement. And you know what, really, isn't that what it's all about? Mm -hmm. Encouraging each That's other. What I want, I yeah. want people to just, you have something that people need to know. Yeah. You have something, you have two arms to wrap around people. That's, yeah. you know, or a smile. Yeah. And just keep running. Keep running. Run your way. <laughs> Go, God. <laughs>